Hello guys, I hope everybody is fine. In today's video, we will be discussing the concept of uh, pumping uh, lemma uh, for context-free grammar. So pumping lemma concept has already been discussed uh, for regular grammars as well. The video's link is available in the description box. So we are going to do in the similar manner what we have discussed in uh, pumping lemma for regular grammar. Again, uh, there are three important points that we need to take care of. Uh, suppose uh, for context-free grammar. So it means we have to prove the important point is we have to prove uh, that the uh, language is not context-free grammar. So it means we have to prove because the context-free grammar whose pushdown automata can be created uh, they are context-free grammars, but whose push-down automata cannot be created, they are not context-free grammar. So we have to prove this particular part. So we have to take three important considerations. We are taking number of states as n. Now I'm taking a, I'm taking z as a string. So I firstly assume that I'm going to assume that. Uh, language is context free. I'm uh, taking the uh, reverse part, but I'm I'm assuming the language is context free, and it means uh, it will be constructed by using push down automata regarding the same thing. So there will be a push down automata that will uh, basically construct uh, the construct uh, whatever problem of context free grammar is given to us. So I'm taking a string z and I'm dividing it into three uh, five parts actually w, uh, u v w x and y. So the first assumption is clearly uh, the assumption that we are going to quote is that z value is greater than equal to n. So what is the meaning of this? This means that the string that you have taken is greater than the number of states. Obviously, guys, if I'm having, let's say, if I have to create for A50 and B50. So this is also context-free grammar. And if we have to create a particular automata of this, I'm not going to take 100 states. Why? I'm not going to take 100 states because if I take 100 states, it means uh, I am taking that many number of states for that many strings. So that doesn't make any sense. We need to find a pattern and we have to make sure that your uh, string length, the string length should be greater than number of states. So this is my very first assumption. Number of states, it can be four or five. If four or five states can design A power 50, B power 50, or if it can be designed in, let's say six states. So that is the best scenario that we have to take. So the first important assumption is Z value is greater than equal to N, fine. So Z is divided into five parts, U, V, W, X, and Y. Uh, then I have to, second important point is, I have to assume that V, X uh, length is greater than equal to one. So why V, X? Because Guys, when you are designing any kind of uh, uh, push down automata, you need to find patterns. Patterns means you need to find where similarities exist or where we can actually create loops. Because it's very impossible to create every, uh, every state for every uh, input symbol. It is not possible. So we have to create loops and we have to create patterns. So that is why we are going to create Z and it is divided. It is split into five parts where I will put K over here. What do you mean by K? K means the number of times V and X are repetitive. So in even in C++ language, why you use for loops? Why you use for loops? For loops are used to basically avoid writing same steps again and again. Same steps are avoided, right? So it means uh, your loop is constructed and it means you have to execute till the condition is 
false so the important point in this till the condition is true you have to run that particular for loop so in this scenario i am taking the loop on v and x i'm why i'm taking the loop why because important thing uh, to understand in this concept is that there can be repetitions in the link there can be repetitions in the string so if those repetitions are denoted by some symbols it means uh, we can uh, we can actually create uh, the the total number of string greater than the number of states so uh, it means like for an example we are creating a push down automata like this a z not a z not q1 so why we are putting a loop on this particular part because if this thing is getting repeated over and over again so uh, it means it's a part of a loop right we don't need to create that many states for this particular uh, particular answer which is getting repeated all and all again like we are taking b a null and why we are putting b a null over here because this is the step which is getting repeated so we assume that there is a string there can be any string there are uh, there are some things which are getting repeated so we assume that it is repeated in v or v x and there this is also repeated in x also and then this is y and this k value is greater than equal to 0 so that is what our basic constraint is so we have got uh, your c part where z value is greater than equal to uh, z value is equal to u v par k w x par k and y it means there are uh, we assume that there are patterns that are very important and uh, your the combination of v w x is great uh, is less than equal to and there is that assumption that we need to quote also apart from that uh, we have a string let's say for example i have a, a scenario a par n b par n c par n n greater than zero now i have to prove that this language is not context free grammar so how will i execute it first important point i assume language is context free grammar it means uh, we can construct a pda for it we can construct pdf for it now i'm taking a string z and z i'm taking the string as triple a triple b and triple c i'm going to divide this into uh, certain parts this is u let's say this is for me is v uh, this is for me is w x and z and y sorry so we are dividing into certain parts second part is uh, your z value is greater than obviously z value we assume it is greater than number of states uh, your vx uh, value is greater than equal to 1 so obviously your string length is a b which is 2 and c is uh, v value is 2 and c value is 2 that is a string length so uh, and x value v and x value are uh, 2 2 so they are greater than equal to 1 now we have to basically third important point is we have to quote that uh, your z value is u v w x and y v par k and x par k and the string was triple a triple b triple c and we have taken your u value as double a v value as this uh, okay so that's what we have taken that is your w that is your x and that is your y clearly if i put k value over here and k value over here if i take k value as 2 if you just take the value uh, see if i put k value as 0 so I will get 2a, uh, 2b's and 1c that doesn't belong to a language. So I'll, I'll take the k value as 2. I'm not taking it as 1. So if I take this value as 2, I'll get double a, a, a b part 2 means 2 times a b is existing. 
right? Then two Bs and uh, again uh, C value uh, and K value as two, I get two times two Cs along with C. Now guys, just check. We have to check whether this belongs to a language or not. The language was saying A par N, B par N and C par N means if I'm having three A's, then I must have three B's and then I must have three C's. Now, after deriving this particular language, this language never belongs to uh, the language. Uh, this string actually never belongs to a language because it never has th three A's, three B's or three C's or maybe it has uh, four A's, four B's and four C's. It is not belonging to a language which is A par N, B par N, C par N. It means whatever we have assumed that uh, this language is context uh, free language, it is wrong. So hence, hence we have proven, proven that language is not a context free grammar. So that's what uh, this whole lecture is all about. Thank you very, very much. If you have any doubts, kindly put it on comment box. Thank you.